Oh, is this? This is John John. His initial plans: military, police, interior. Little John John. Suddenly, in Italy. And this is the backstory on the Save the World plan. <laughs> I see nothing. I hear nothing. For sure. Like, for me, it felt pretty clear, for the most part, although I did get faked out by that gunshot last episode, that John John was on a path and there was just sort of no unseeing what he's already seen, no undeciding what he's already decided. That being said, putting myself not only in his shoes, but basically in everyone's shoes in this situation, it's somewhat unfathomable to me how much strength it would take to ignore that pull, if that makes sense. Because all the convenient outs are there. They started it, right? It's for our safety. It's for the safety of our families. I didn't choose this. Aaron is doing this. The path to inaction is right there for the taking. And also probably looks pretty damn sweet. You could be sipping whiskey on an Italian balcony. You could be at a carnival eating a whole pie after your friends abandon you. And all you have to do is shut your eyes and ears and it all goes away, at least for now. But John John has already faced a microcosm of that challenge in his decision to join the scouts. And he's been established as a real empath. How can he overlook this, which has, in my opinion, much greater stakes than his season one decision? How could he turn a blind eye now that the stakes are so much bigger than ever before? Not to mention the fact that his friends are once again putting their lives on the line to defend something that he himself wants. I think one of my weak points when it comes to reaction videos is memory of specific details, but I just have this strong feeling like this has been set up for John John for a very long time. You know, ideas of responsibility, leadership, watching people suffer due to his own inaction and hesitancy, speaking up for what he believes is right. This is a very long time coming for John John. But it was sort of a foregone conclusion. <laughs> Understandable. Hanji has been through a lot herself. Honestly, it's amazing they, they survived. It's a mixed crew. Very interesting assembly. <laughs> you would think that that would be well agreed upon, however. Wow. Very humble, but also very observant. They're already there. Yeah, they've, they've watched. It's been a long time coming. To me, that feels really natural and organic and something that's been building for a long time. I think I first had this thought when I watched her OVA. That being said, just because I feel like it's a natural conclusion and one that's building for a long time, that doesn't make it any easier. Speaking of nearly impossible choices, even ignoring that whole metaphysical bond thing that pulls Mikasa towards Eren. Eren is essentially her brother. And perhaps more than that was at one point her entire reason for existence and purpose. Except she always had that tiny spark of something else, right? That life is not just cruel spark. I guess part of her development over the course of the show was that tiny spark being gradually nurtured to the point where her value is stronger and more internally derived. Yeah, it doesn't even solve all your problems, right? Right, and now they're going to be more determined than ever because the rumbling validated everything they believed. All of this is valid. Like, this needs to be addressed. Yes. That also seems correct to me. It's alright, we're all under a lot of pressure. <laughs> Kanji's conscience is not clear, yeah. Although it's totally understandable and forgivable. It's just so much to manage. It's so complex. <sighs> Damn, Hanji. Honoring that legacy. There they are. There he is. Damn. <laughs> Night of the end. Whew. This isn't the last episode, is it? <laughs> that that can't be right. Please give us a final, final, 
final season. It feels so amazing to see Erwin. I know I'm the biggest Erwin fanboy. I make no apologies for that at all. In many ways, I feel like Erwin's arc is sort of the encapsulation and embodiment of a lot of the show's themes. Like, I think it was pretty much from, from Erwin's death onward that I knew what the show was about, or that I knew which way the show was going. One of the biggest, most impactful elements of it for me is this idea of, like, looking life dead in the eye and seeing it for all it is, including its intense cruelty, and then taking on something like a vow to maximize one's own responsibility, to at least not contribute to that hell. Even that would be unbelievably impactful in ways far beyond what anyone can imagine, I think. Just to be the kind of person that never does anything that the person knows to be wrong, you know, never willingly, through the benefit of making excuses, does things that feel terrible or are clearly not for the best of oneself or others because it's easy or because the opposite is challenging. One above that, maybe way above that, is to always do what one feels is right. That's way more difficult than it sounds like. It's easy to imagine doing the right thing when there are no stakes, but it would be a totally different story if, one, you're the only person who thinks that that's the right thing to do. Two, there's immense personal sacrifice involved. Three, and maybe most deadly, you want a certain result to the very bottom of your soul more than you've ever wanted anything. But doing what you feel is right requires you to sacrifice that vision. And despite getting a lot of pushback about the idea that, no, there always is a choice. It's pretty clear to me that this is the way that I want to be and this is the way that I want to conceptualize the world. And I don't even think this is idealism. I think this is pragmatism. It's just a map that looks a little bit further. It's really easy to make something that's not okay for anyone else okay for us. But that is a, a massive, in my opinion, weakness in thinking. Because what it misses is the humanity of others, the arrogance of thinking that we deserve more than others or that other people's pain isn't as great as ours. The act of arguing to justify travesty or violence or whatever based on one's own pain opens the floodgates for anybody to do the same. And everybody has pain, spoiler alert. Everyone can find justifications for wrongdoing. It's really easy and it leads nowhere or it leads into the spiral of like, well, what about when you did this or what about when you did that? The only way out is up and that's going to be difficult because that means removing tools. You know, you're removing tools from your arsenal that make you somewhat less equipped to fight, but so be it. That's what makes it heroic. And I would argue that just about everyone alive today and maybe existence itself owes itself to the fact that just a small number of people chose to rise to that challenge and do good instead of evil. Because how quickly could things devolve if there were no people like that? If everything was a sort of like like tit for tat, you started it. I'm worried about my own annihilation so I can do whatever I, I please. There's just no sustaining society or the world in any, in any capacity. It's the very few people who saw through that and aspire to rise to the challenge and become greater than what they saw and be pinnacles that could then create the foundation for one higher movement of society or thought that allows any kind of progress or peace to happen at all. And so don't we have a responsibility to honor that? Knowing that our hellish actions cause more hell and knowing that the peace we experience or the great things in our lives come largely from the sacrifice of those that came before us, doesn't that create a very clear path for action or a very clear gauntlet that we pick up? And pragmatics aside, isn't that partly what it means to live? Like, isn't that largely where meaning is found? What greater meaning could you want than becoming the ultimate person that you could be in a way that connects yourself to the greatness that came before you and creates the possibility for greatness in the future in a way that is organically connected to the human species and therefore the world and therefore the entire universe? There is like no greater meaning than that. Everything else to me just seems like some kind of sleep. You know, it's like what, what John was saying. Close your eyes, close your ears. Slip into what's easy. Go into being an animal. Justify your worst evils if it makes you feel better and see how far that gets you. And I'm not even talking about the world stage thing, although I think that applies. For me, the world stage is a reflection of the individual. People are so quick to justify the extermination of others, but can't even like make minor improvements in their own in their own life. These are the people that get to determine the fates of millions or billions of other people. This is very controversial, but there are things worse than death. And there are greater rewards to be had than the continuation of life. Everyone dies, not everyone lives. Not everyone understands what it means to be connected and to find actual value, real value, universal objective value through oneself, through rising to the ultimate level of heroism. People would much rather dispense with that notion, you know, dispense with the notion that there actually is, is greatness, that there is glory that is possible in oneself because it's difficult. And because it would require a different kind of death, the death of survival mechanisms that we picked up through the trauma of childhood that have allowed us to cope long enough to survive that now weaken us because they have become systemic to our very core. The difficulty of resisting the temptation of like deep animal pleasures, it's very difficult to rise beyond that. It's way easier to make excuses. It's way easier to blame others. And Erwin had that all figured out. And Hanji learned that from Erwin. And speaking of this show being unbelievably significant and meta, I too get that from Erwin. And now I'll get that from Hanji because that's who I want to be and that's how I want to live. That all being said, while I'm totally behind Honey's explanation that no, genocide is wrong categorically. I don't think it's wrong for John Dunn to raise those objections. If we're going to take on this really difficult challenge, let's look it in the face and not do it delusionally. Let's aim for being morally good, treating other people as humans, even our enemies, and let's do our best to win while doing our best to protect ourselves, even if the chances of survival are razor thin. 
I too will forever be a scout. This one's for Sasha. <laughs> this is potatoes for our fallen comrade comrades on all sides, and there's a lot of sides. War has changed. I like your your dinner there, bottle of alcohol. Yep, understandable why there would be some hurt feelings. <laughs> yeah. They're all right, is the thing. Mishimir. <laughs> I mean, they're both being like children. There's a truth to this, though. Like, in any conflict that has gone on long enough, there will always be validity to these arguments. This is going to sound like a really stupid comparison, but, like, I feel like anyone who's been in a romantic relationship knows that this is a dead end. You get into a relationship with your girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever, and they blame you for something, and you say, well, what about when you did X? How many times does that end in someone being like, oh, you're right, I started it? Never. It never goes well. It always feels like an attack. Why? Because no one really does things without having come up with a justification for why they're doing it, or without being able to come up with a justification for why they're doing it. Generally, people operate through emotion. We all have our frameworks for viewing the world. A lot of them are based on childhood and things we haven't fully worked out yet, haven't fully rationalized, haven't fully taken responsibility for. And so things hit us that become threats. They're not actually threats, but they feel like threats because of the way we have internalized our own worth and our own place in the world. And so then from that emotion, we are pushed into action. And the way that feels is that I had no choice. And when confronted with wrongdoing, the instinct is to self-preserve and self-protect because you're preserving the very foundation of your being and the very system from which you view the world. And it's very difficult to break out of that. I think it's not even clear to a lot of people that there's even a choice. We don't talk about that. Like even in our language, if somebody hurts me and I do something as a result of that, the language I'll use is you made me do this. That's not the case. I'm an autonomous being. I can make a choice at any given moment how I act, always. Even if the likely outcome in many cases is death, it's still a choice. The emotions themselves may be less of a choice, but what I do from those emotions is certainly a choice. What's also a choice is working through those emotions to the point where they're no longer automatic, where I can question the way things hit me to a point where I have a more healthy filter on on what actions are and what they mean to me and be more resilient internally from them. In an argument with a significant other, the solution to pain is not striking another blow, it's finding out the cause of the conflict and putting an end to it without keeping score. Keeping score just builds resentment and if that's the game you want to play, other people will beat you at that game because no one's perfect and the wrong you do will come back to haunt you. You gotta get your girlfriend out of the forest. <laughs> Meanwhile, the actual children are just kind of like sitting back and listening. I think you got enough to focus on in the future or in the present. Let's bond over potato soup. It's definitely unusual. It is strange. They could easily go back to being ignorant devils. They just choose not to because they're amazing. You don't have to make that a goal. I mean, it's a very likely thing, but yeah, the goal is to stop him. There's no way through except for Erwin-like gambles. Do the best you can for now. There's a certain amount of faith that goes into it. I don't know, you make the, the goal stopping him, and you start walking down the path, and you let the path reveal itself to you. I get Annie's concern, though. And she's the biggest <laughs> suspect. But you haven't been watching the show, Annie. You've been in a crystal. It's been there. It's been lurking. What we need right now is a leader. Leadership. They're putting a lot of faith in Mikasa, too. I mean, they need her. She's their ace. <laughs> it's nice to see Hanji retaining an element of her, you know, cheerful personality, despite everything that's happened. I feel like Marley's a good bet. Elena might actually end up being clutch. I love how Pik seems to enjoy her Titan form more than her human form. Kani seems back to his old self, largely, which is a huge relief. Yeah, 
自らを嘘で塗り固め人類史に刻まれんとするその欲深さに敬服いたします世界を救う、世界を救う、世界を救う、世界を救う、世界を救う、世界を救う、世界を救う、世界を救う、世界を救う、世界を救う、世界を救う、世界を救う、世界を救う、世界を救う、世界を救う、世界を救う、世界を救う、世界を救う、世界を救う、世界を救う、世界を救う、世界を救う、世界を救う、世界を救う、世界を救う、世界を救う、世界を救う、世界を救う、世界を救う、Best card, best card in a long time. So satisfying. It's about as satisfying as Hanji's potatoes do. Dore da keno eludia jin ga kyo jin ni kui koro sareta de shou ne. Ani leon heart. Anata mo zuibun to chou sa hei dan o koro shita so des ne. Stohesku de mo oze no junin o fumitsubu shita toka. Yep, that is true. Fudan wa ryoshiki jin no anata ga. Yep, that is true. Dore da keno shitai no yama to senka o ageta koto de shou. No lies so far. Watashi wa wasurete wa imasen. Yep. That too. Yep, I can Sasha hear a lot of people watching the show <laughs> yelling at their screens right now. Sasha also had sins, though. That's stew, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I actually I feel the same way. I feel like that was a great, great thing to say. Very few people at this potato stew last supper gathering have clean consciences. I don't think the answer is like sweeping that under the rug. It's like, yeah, look at your crimes, right? As everyone should look at and own up to their own mistakes. And forgiveness also is not necessarily possible and not even necessarily the goal, perhaps. The point is who are you now and what are you going to do about it? Not a single person is clean of wrongdoing, but every person alive has a choice for the following moment and then the moment after that, etc. And although it's tough to swallow, even having done the worst things does not mean you cannot do great things in the future. Human beings are more complex than we like to allow. You know, we sort of see people as solid entities where we can assign a Qualifier to them, good or bad, or what have you, depending on the sort of sum total of what we know about them. Often actually being totally dominated by the extremes. Like if they do something great, they're great. And if they do something terrible, they're terrible, regardless of all the other shades of gray in the middle in terms of their actions and character. But I feel a more accurate view of humans is that it isn't even just one person, it's like many people. Across moments, the most important of those moments being this one right now. Now, of course, there are pragmatic concerns to thinking this way because we have to make choices about how much trust to place in people. And to that extent, I think one important thing is time and evidence of change. So, Yelena too could turn it around, right? But she's sort of the least willing and the latest to have committed what this crew sees as crimes. And so, she's the farthest out of the circle. But it doesn't mean there isn't hope for her too, if that makes sense. <laughs> She's looking for wounds. She's looking for wounds to throw salt in. Oh no. It's funny how the individual we know will hit harder than like thousands, millions of unknown people's deaths. It was a little more than that. Good, let's look at it. That's what happened. Yeah, that's closer to the truth. It's a tough one. It's like a crazy sort of purification attempt. And I like it. It sort of starts with taking responsibility for their crimes. But we're not out of the woods yet. There's a lot of bad blood here. よくもマルコオとか言いながらもういいって罪悪感で頭がおかしくなっちまったんだろう許せないでくれ俺はわあ本当に年をもねもういいってすまないあ oh, what is going on I don't think Ryan would even object to this nothing John can do to him right now would be more painful than the pain he already feels from knowing his own crimes <gasps> Who's the child here? <laughs> this is such an unbelievable scene. It's like the show answering very directly a lot of qualms that people have about it, I think. It like needed to come out. All this needed to, be, to come out and be looked at directly. It can't be glossed over. But how did he pass up a chance at Hanji Stu seconds? Okay, it's a heated moment, I get it. He'll come back later for some. Lucina. Oh, he's up! Look who's awake! 
Look who's joined the party. Did Levi get soup? I feel like that's essential for his recovery. That's another thing that bothers slash worries me. I think people generally are well-meaning, you know, and they, they rally behind causes that are good causes, at least in name, in spoken intention. But there's a danger created by fighting and sacrificing for a cause via contributing to increased power of a certain group. It's not that that will always be a mistake or will always go wrong, but the crux of it is that it's a faith-based thing where you are handing people power and trusting that they're going to do what they say they're going to do with that power. When many times people's goal will just be power for themselves and will find a narrative, an emotionally compelling narrative, to get other people to fight for power on their own behalf so that they can be tyrannical. And man, does that hurt when you've given something up or when you fight for people that later turn out to be not on your side or even are harming you. That was sort of the gut-wrenching part about the kids fighting for Marley. It's like, the Marleyans are not your friends, kids. You know what I mean? But that's true in life as well. Like, it's true of politics, it's true of any large group, really. There's always that danger when there's this, like, emotional narrative sweeping things that allows people to consolidate power and then sort of hand that power off to someone else, trusting them that they're going to do the right thing. It's tricky. It can go wrong real fast, as history has shown many times. And one of the greatest tragic jokes, let's call it, in history is, this time it's different. No, <laughs> Runners with a lot of sleeping. He's just trying to sleep off that, that guilt. It's not gonna work. The only way out is forward. He doesn't need one. No one hates Reiner more than Reiner right now. <laughs> People are awesome. Man. Before we fight the enemy, we gotta fight our friends. I guess they're all our friends now. They have taken total control. The hero crew is not the only one making moves. This episode was incredible to me, and, you know, I didn't expect it, but I, it makes so, so much sense in hindsight. Being as self-aware as it is, this needed to come to light. It needed to be addressed. The characters needed to at least acknowledge their crimes. We can't just pretend that all these characters have just been great from the beginning, and they're just good guys, and they're fighting this totally moral fight. It's like, no one's conscience is clean. None of them are categorically heroes. The focus for me is more about who they are now, and that means not ignoring the past, not pretending that what they did was justified, on any side, but looking at things as they are, and at the very least, using the the pain, the intense personal pain of that experience to do better things, even knowing that that won't erase their crimes, or it won't make their crimes any better. It's just doing what they can do right now, you know, the, the moment they have in their hands right at this moment. And that opportunity is an individual one, which is why it's possible that this group of stew eaters from vastly different backgrounds can come together and sort of be in the same place. Speaking of which, you know, speaking of sides, this is probably a bigger thing than most people realize. Like, I would say for the vast, vast majority of people, one's outlook, as much as it feels like it was individually generated, is probably just a result of environment. That's why, generally speaking, speaking at least, beliefs can be geographically mapped. You know, isn't that weird? Which I think raises an interesting question for introspection. Let's say my beliefs match my location's beliefs perfectly. Isn't that suspicious? You know what I mean? Isn't it a little convenient that I, a thinking autonomous being, have exactly the same outlook as all the people around me? It doesn't mean those beliefs are wrong. It just means that it's a good opportunity to sort of reflect on how did I arrive at those things? Is it that I came to these realizations on my own, perfectly conceptualized and logically articulated, and also happened to be born in a place where everyone else had the same process, exactly the same process, whereas people over here did not. Isn't that a little bit convenient? Given how complex the world is, to me it seems like if everybody was really articulating things from the ground up, we would be all over the place in terms of, you know, I agree with these people on this, and I agree with these people on this, I agree with no one on this, I agree with everyone else on this, you know? To be perfectly fair, disagreeing with everyone around you isn't an indication of being any more right. A lot of times people form reactionary beliefs, you know, they reject the majority because of bitterness or wanting to find, you know, sort of a unique identity that makes one stand out which is just another form of non-freedom intellectually. But anyway, even though this episode was like them sitting around a campfire eating soup, it was one of the most important for me, I feel. And I'm really glad that they had that moment acknowledging Erwin. I feel like these characters are indeed honoring the legacy of the past and building a legacy for the future, and also inspiring me in the process.